All I can say that this is going to be quite a way to end the school year. I don't know about you, but I was all set to use a tried and true curriculum with my ELL newcomers class to bring fun units on animals and sports and ending with a grand finale of writing stories together and separately. COVID-19 changed those plans along with the plans billions of others had around the globe. Here are a few tips I have learned so far in my remote teaching of ELLs, along with what other teachers of English language learners from around the country have shared with me. Throw your regular curriculum out the door. If any class can have a student-driven curriculum, it's an ELL class. We can teach reading, writing, speaking, and listening with any topic. And now is the time to do everything we can to teach high interest topics. I asked my ELL newcomers what they wanted to learn about. And they said the coronavirus, sports, jobs, and the military. Some of them are in our school's JROTC program. Bam, there's my curriculum for the next several weeks. Are they necessarily the topics that I think they need to learn most about to be successful academically? No, but now is not the time for the perfect to be the enemy of the good. It's critical to incorporate student choice in independent activities also. We should do that always, but now more than ever. I tell students that in addition to our regular online class activities, I'd like them to spend at least 15 to 30 minutes a day on one of several sites. Students can use BrainPop, Raz Kids, English Central, Epic, ReadWorks, or Common Lit. Do they all do it? No. Do more do homework than if they didn't have that kind of choice? I can tell from experience the answer is yes. I'm not a big fan of regular synchronous teaching. I think generally the lives of our students with childcare and work responsibilities and juggling a single device among multiple family members combined with the challenges facing teachers with their own childcare responsibilities just creates too many obstacles. But I do think an exception can be made with English language learning newcomers. If any class is gonna be synchronous, I think that's the one that's worth doing if at all possible. They need as much live English input and social emotional support as possible and are a particularly vulnerable population for many reasons. If you are going to do a live class, keep it short and simple. My strategy is that it's better to leave them wanting more than wishing the class would end sooner. I teach a daily 30 minute class which has three main parts opening up with a question or sentence frame that everyone says. For example, I feel grateful for blank because blank, followed by a short lesson supported by a slideshow that I screen share. The lesson could include introducing vocabulary with a labeled picture that students repeat in choral fashion. Um, it could include asking students to write a sentence about the photo in the chat box, or they could listen to me doing a read aloud which they would then repeat. After that short lesson, we end with a game, usually one I create on the quizzes site where everyone logs on and can see who is winning and who wins. Generally, I do one game for beginners and another for students who have been here for a little while longer, and they play the game simultaneously. Then we all end with a ritual I borrowed from our principal by holding up our hands and clapping while we're done. Incorporate fun, kidding with students, gentle sarcasm, which is different from weaponized sarcasm, making fun of ourselves. I'm old and bald, so both self-deprecation and invited ridicule in good fun works well. All can help create a joyful communal atmosphere. Consider keeping the conference call open for a few minutes after the class formally ends so students can talk to one another. Our students have been isolated for a long time. Anytime I ask students to stay on the conference call after class if they're having a technical problem, 
half the class stayed just because they want to connect with each other. Connect with parents as much as possible. I speak Spanish and most of my students are Spanish speaking, so it makes things easier. But if you don't speak the parents' language, call them from a landline and use the Google Assistant app on your smartphone and use the interpreter feature, which does an incredible job of interpreting between pauses. Parents can encourage students to participate in class and sometimes they will join their children in class to learn English too. Talking to parents can also give you a better sense of what's going on at home, including if there are financial, legal, or illness-related stress. I know we're all stressed, busy, and overwhelmed, but if possible, fit in a regular 10 or 15 minute individual conversation with each student to talk about their homework, their writing, and really the most important thing, their social emotional health. As I mentioned earlier, ELLs are a pretty vulnerable population in a normal school situation. It's only worse now. After each Friday class, my students are on a regular schedule for these kinds of check-ins. Finally, just try your best. Some students will stop coming and others will start coming. Some will do the work and some won't. Some of our lessons will resonate and some will flop. And trust me, I'm speaking from experience. I think it's a safe bet we'll be doing some version of remote teaching for the next year or longer. So view the end of this school year as an opportunity to figure out what will and won't work for the longer term. Let's all just give it our best shot.